Hello, my most amazing artist. I hope that everybody's having a fabulous day. Let's jump right in to our art class catchphrase. I make messes. I make mistakes. But deep inside, I got what it takes. I am an artist. Awesome, friends. Today we're going to be making wizard castles and I'm really excited about that. In a moment, I'll be telling you what supplies you need, but first, big love to our sponsors. Ticonderoga, I'm going to be drawing with some of their markers today, actually coloring, I should say, and I love their markers. They're called Prang. They make the best markers, and one of the reasons I love them is for when we do this marker trick where we add water, they work beautifully. I'm also using some of their paper, which is called Pakin Mixed Media Paper. It's great because when you're done painting on it, the paper isn't all wrinkly and weird like my grandma. No, no, it stays nice and flat. So thank you, Ticonderoga, for being one of our sponsors. Our other sponsor is Art to Remember. Think about all the masterpieces that you have been creating with me so far. I know you want to remember all of them, but sometimes artwork gets lost or damaged. A way that you can cherish and remember your artwork is by using something called Art to Remember. It's a free website. All, well, most websites are free, but it's a free thing that you can use where you take photos of your artwork, upload them for free, there we go, onto their website, and then you can share your gallery with people all over the world. Even better, you can have your masterpieces printed on a whole slew of really cool things. So thank you, Ticonderoga, and thank you, Art to Remember. Let's talk about what we're making today. We're going to be making these castles using shapes. We'll be using these supplies, a permanent marker to draw with. You don't have to draw with a permanent marker. You could if you wanted to draw with a pencil and then trace with a permanent marker. But having a permanent marker is important. If you don't have a black one, use one that's colorful. You'll also need coloring markers. I'll be using my praying ones and crayons a cup of water, and a paintbrush. Then we're gonna transform our castles into something flat to making it look three-dimensional. We will be using all of the elements of art today. So why don't we go through what the elements of art are so we remember. <laughs> I thought that paper was gonna run away from home. That's why I put my hand there. All right, here we go. <clears throat> Line, shape, color, baby, color, form, value, texture, space. Awesome, get those pinkies ready, peeps. I pinky promise that today, during art class with Cassie, that's me, I will do my best. I will try my hardest, and I will keep a positive attitude. Mwah. All right, friends, grab your paper and your permanent marker. That's what we'll be starting with, and let's get started. So for this castle that's going to be a lot wider, I'm going to start here first. And the first thing I'm going to do is think about the placement of things or the composition. Where do I want the drawbridge? That's the door that comes down from the castle that goes over a bridge that lets people in. Where will I draw that? So I'm gonna take my marker and draw it a couple of times with my finger because I know that if I draw it really small, that's fine, I'll have a lot more space for my castle. If I make it really big, well, I might not have a lot of room. So practice a couple of times. I'm almost just making like a rainbow line near the middle bottom of my paper. So I'm going to go up, whoop, over, and then come back down. Now, if you are drawing your castle on a mountaintop, you might want to take your finger, draw out that mountaintop shape first. I'm going to be drawing mine in a cloud. I need to think about making sure that I don't make my cloud too big. It's gonna kind of be near the bottom of my paper, about as tall or wide as my hand. When I draw a cloud, I like to use the letter C, and I like to kind of curve the C around so it makes kind of a cursive E. If that's a little tricky to do, you could just make curved lines that connect, or you could do a little bit of both, like me, for some variety. 
If you can't decide what kind of castle you want to draw, you could be drawing with two pieces of paper just like me. All right, now that I have that finished, I also need to decide where my drawbridge will go. So I think I'm gonna put it right about there. Notice it's a little bit smaller because I wanna have more space for my castle. All right, I'm gonna draw the texture on my drawbridge door. I wanna show that it's made out of wood. Texture is one of those elements of art. And even though if I close my eyes, it still just feels like a smooth piece of paper. I don't see the texture. When you draw lines that look like a texture, that's called implied texture. What are you implying? I'm implying that this door is a little bit rough and scratchy as if it's made out of wood. I think for this one, I'll save the texture for when I use my markers. All right, my next step is I'm going to make a square that goes up over and down around this curved line. So I'm keeping it pretty close to my castle, to my door, my drawbridge door. I'm going to go up so it gets just above my door. There we go. Got a little wonky that line. That's okay. Over, boop. And then I'm coming back down. All I did was make me a nice little square right around that door. Let's see if I can do the same thing here. I'm gonna go up, starting at my cloud. Over, and then I'm coming back down. Now, I said you could follow along with me, but you know what? I'm gonna show you a bunch of different ways that you could draw your castle. So if at any point you decide you wanna draw something a little different, I'm not about to stop you. I want you to go for it. I just extended this line over a little bit with two horizontal lines. And now I'm going to go up just a little and up just a little to create something called dental molding. You'll recognize this because oftentimes you'll see this on castles or even houses that are extra fancy. Here's how you make a dental molding line or you could just call it a teeth line or tooth line. I think that would make more sense. Over, down, over, up. Horizontal, vertical, horizontal, vertical. It's an A, B pattern of two straight lines. I'm trying to make them about the same length and ooh, boop, boop, boop. Got a little short right there just so I could finish it. Now on this one, let's try something a little bit different. Let's have two lines that go up, up, and then let's close that rectangle. But when we do, let's have the line be a little longer on the sides so we can also add the dental molding up, up, over, down, over, up, horizontal, vertical, horizontal, vertical, A, B, A, and B. Sweet. All right, now let's go back to work on this one. We're actually gonna do something similar to what we did here. I'm going to make two lines that go up. I'm trying to make my castle as it gets further up, more and more narrow. And that'll do a, something cool. It'll make the illusion that my castle is actually bigger. So I'm gonna draw a line here. Whoop. And a line, let's see, right about there. I think that looks like they're evenly spaced from the side. I'll repeat this step. I'm going a little faster because I'm repeating something that we just did. And then you guessed it. Now this one you can make a little taller if you want to for some variety. You could make these lines maybe a little bit longer if you wanted to. You are the artist, you get to decide. Oh, while you're waiting, you could even squeeze a window in if you wanted to. Maybe I'll add one little window right there with an arched line and a horizontal line underneath. Ooh, speaking of, maybe I could do the same thing here. Rainbow curve, a little bit of a balcony to lean out. Sweet, all right, now I'm going to go and stick with this one. Do you see this line here that I created? I'm going to just bunny hop over and go up bunny hop over and go up. Piece of cake, is this not the easiest? All right, I'm doing the same thing here except I'm trying to make it get more narrow as it comes up. So I'm gonna go up, maybe I'll make it a little longer. Same length here with two vertical lines 
It's a little leaning. It's the leaning castle of wizards. I'll close it and I think for the top of this one, I'm going to add a triangle. Now, if you wanted to, you could, you already know how to do the dental molding. You could add two lines here and go up, over, over, up, over, 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 over. I am just going to stick with my triangle, but you, do, you, boo, boo. And of course, let's add a texture in here. There we go. Sweet, and now I have this big space. Could you add more than one window? Maybe this is a big rainbow with a rectangle little leaning balcony so Rapunzel can lean over and have her hair fall down the castle. You could even draw her in there if you wanted to. All right, I'm back to this one. I think for this one, I'm gonna make my triangle go a little bit past and then come up and then down. Now I have room near the top of my paper at this one. So I'm gonna make a line that goes to the top and then I think I'll make a little flag do your flags any way you like. For this one, I'm just going to use two diagonals that create a triangle. Let's work on that implied texture since we have some more room. Think about what you could add to the top right here. And maybe I'll make two little windows. Oh, that looks fancy. Gosh, I don't know which castle I like better. This one's looking pretty fancy. All right, now let's go ahead. We've made our castle tall. Let's start to make it a little bit wider. So I'm going to make a tower here and a tower here. Let's start on this side. Do you see this line I have right here? Let's go ahead and hop over, making that line go up. Now I'm going to make another line beside it that's the same length. Going down? Well, yes, I am going down, thank you. And now I'm gonna close it. Now you could add, you know, close it with a line that's a little longer. Now, if you wanted to, you could just make a triangle here. I'm going to keep making my dental molding because I love it. It makes it really castle-y. That's, that's a word, in case you didn't know. castle -y is a word. Uh, my name is Castle Lee Stevens. All right, now for this, I think I will add a triangle in here, but I'm gonna keep it kind of short because I want to add my flag. So I made a vertical line and then out and then out. Awesome. Okay, this one's looking pretty good. Maybe I'll do a little bit something different on that, but it's a little bit blank. I have these nice big space that I could make a big arch for a window here and a big arch for a window there. Great, okay, so now if you're waiting over here, let's keep going. Do you see this corner? I'm actually gonna do something very similar. I'm going to go up. Oops, I bumped into my dental molding, that's okay. Now on this one, maybe I will go over Go back down to the cloud. You could do something similar to this, or you could just add a triangle. I think I'm gonna do something very similar. I'm gonna add two lines up. You guys are experts at this. There we go. Up, ooh, I'm gonna make it a little taller and more pointy. Variety, I don't want my castle to look the same. If you're getting really excited about castles or you want some other ideas, here's one of my favorite castles. There's castles all over Europe. Did you know this? They are beautiful, but my favorite castle is one in Germany and the castle is called Neuschwanstein. You should try to say that, Neuschwanstein. And the reason, I'm just gonna keep drawing while I'm jibber jabbering. Look what I'm about to do here. The reason it's my favorite is because it's what Walt Disney used as his idea or inspiration for the castles at Disney World and Disneyland. All right, and I just did a dental molding over here. I'm gonna come in and go down. Here's the deal with New Schwanstein. This guy, this king, had a perfectly fine castle, but it just wasn't fancy enough for him. So you know what he did? He had the castle knocked down so he could build an even fancier one. And it is a beautiful castle from the outside. But 
Unfortunately, it never got finished. So if you ever go to Germany to tour the castle, which you can and you should, you'll see rooms that, well, you actually won't see the rooms that are, that are not complete. They won't let you see them. There's only a few rooms that you can go into that are done. All right, I'm gonna go ahead. I don't want my castle to be incomplete. So I'm bringing my line down. If you are all finished with your castle or you're drawing something totally different than me, vertical, vertical, that's great. If you're ready to move on to coloring, you're ready to move on to the painting trick, you can always just skip ahead. You don't have to wait for me, especially if you're getting ideas from other castles, which I totally think you should. All right, I'm gonna add another flag over here. And now I think I'm gonna use this space. You could do the exact same thing on this side, which would make your castle symmetrical, the same on both sides. But I want mine to be asymmetrical. That means it's different over here. So I think I'm gonna put a big tower over here. So starting here, I'm going to go up. And then I think I'm just gonna do my dental molding until it gets close to the edge here. So maybe I'll put my finger there and go over a little lot, dot where I want to stop. Over, down, over, up, over, down, over, up, over, down, over, and up. Maybe I'll go over once more. Come down, go in, and come back down. Awesome. Ooh, this is a big, beautiful space now that I have here. Could add a couple of windows. I think I'll just add one big window. Maybe it could be a stained glass window. So maybe I could draw some shapes in there that I can color with the markers. That might be pretty cool. Now over here, I think I'll add a tower. I'm just finding some spaces to go up. You could do your tower any way you want to. I'm going to close mine with a triangle and maybe add another flag. You do whatever you want to do. This is your wizard castle. This is your chance to design your own. Uh, let's see, you know what? I think on this one, I'll also do it a little bit differently. So I'm gonna come up and over and down. Maybe go out and out and make some more dental molding. A couple of windows, maybe a really tall one. A tower would be great. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to use our crayons to color the background. So as you're finishing your drawing, be thinking about what do you want your background to look like for your sky. Is it a sunny day? Is it a stormy day? Is the wizard inside a little cranky or grouchy and casting some spells? It's making the sky a little bit stormy. <laughs> Look how wonky my little molding got right there. So what kind of sky could you have? Evening, sunrise, sunset. I will only be coloring the background and then I will start working with marker on the castle. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my crayons and color lightning fast to color my background. Now that I'm finished coloring the background, I can start to use my markers. So I'm using what's called water-based markers. They're just like coloring markers. What you might want to make sure that you don't use is that you don't accidentally use permanent markers when you're coloring. Permanent markers aren't going to work for this trick. We're going to be painting with our markers, but we're not gonna dip our markers in water. We're going to be just outlining the shapes of what we want to add color to. So I want the windows inside of my castle to look like they're on, like the lights are on, it's glowing. So I'm just outlining those shapes on the inside. And now I'm gonna pick a color for my castle. I think I want it to be kind of a, a fantasy castle. So instead of making it gray, I think I'm gonna go with orange. And I know that seems like a strange color, but I was thinking of having it contrast or be something totally different than my background. 
So notice how I'm going around the inside edges. I just outlined. But to really get this trick to work, you can't do that just once. You need to go back and do it twice, two or three times to really make sure you have a nice, bright, colorful outline. So I'm gonna do that to some of these towers, but I think I'm gonna switch up my colors a little bit. Maybe use another warm color. Right now I'm just using the warm colors. You could use any colors you like. The warm colors are the first three colors in the rainbow, red, orange, and yellow. And I'm doing that, like I said, to kind of contrast with what's happening in the background behind my castle. All right, speaking of the background and the front, it's called the foreground and I did this cloud shape. So I'm gonna kind of go and trace that, but notice how I'm not being super perfect about staying on my line. Cause I want it to look kind of fun and funky and give that cloud a little bit of texture. So I'm tracing it again, but not being super careful to stay on those lines like I was for my castle. That was a nice break to take a little break from coloring this in. If you want to, you could start to use your markers to add a texture. So I'm just gonna draw some lines to show that that's a wooden texture for the drawbridge. And I think, ooh, I'm gonna use something totally different. Maybe now switch to some of my cold colors for the top of my castle. You can use any colors you like. Your goal, remember, is to outline a couple of times to get those colors nice and dark. I'm gonna finish outlining everything and then I'll be ready to paint. All right, I'm finished outlining my castle and now I'm ready to do that trick. Now I'm only doing it to this castle, but I did finish this castle a little while ago and you can see I used my markers around the edges and then I added water. When you do this water trick, it's important that you don't take your brush and brush it all over the whole castle because then all of the colors will mix together and make for a muddy looking castle. I want my castle to be nice and colorful and bright. So when I do this, I've got a little cup of water and a paintbrush and I'm going to paint on top of my marker a little bit to wake that marker up and turn it into a kind of paint. Now you might be thinking, it doesn't really look like it's working. It actually has to have some time for the water to help make the marker bleed or the colors spread out. So you'll wanna put water on there and then you're going to want to just let it sit because the longer it sits, sometimes it happens right away, the longer it sits, then the color will start to spread out. But the key is to paint on top of your marker lines and then bring that color towards the center. Now again, I'm only painting one part at a time. Notice I'm not taking my brush over the whole thing because I wanna make sure that this door stays brown and doesn't mix in with the red part of the castle. So you're just gonna take your brush and notice how every time I dip it, I'm also kind of swirling it at the bottom of my cup. That helps to clean it a little bit so that my colors don't get too muddy when I'm painting. All right, I'm gonna take it and go over my cloud. The longer that it sits here, the longer that, the, the more time you're giving the marker juice to come out so you'll be able to see it a little bit better. I like that I can kind of see a value we're using all of the elements of art today and we've used line to draw with. We transformed our lines into shape for the castle. We definitely used color for both the background and for our castle. So we've used line, shape, color, baby, color. Form is what we've been able to achieve by making the marker on the outside. It makes the color on the inside have a lighter value, which is also an element of art. And it made our castle not look flat, but it made it look fat. It has form like it's made out of cylinders instead of just rectangles. We were able to create texture by drawing some of those lines. We even did some implied lines on the other castle. We now are achieving space. We have space because especially in this drawing, I have a foreground. That would be where my cloud is. I have a middle ground, that's where my castle is, and I have a background, that's what the sky is behind. Every time you create a work of art, whether you're meaning to or not, 
you are using all of the elements of art. They all work together every time you sit down to create to make your masterpiece. So I'm finished. I'm definitely going to let mine dry because about 30 minutes because I know that the colors will continue to spread and it will look amazing. I hope that you had so much fun making your castle. Give it time to sit there and dry. I know it's going to look beautiful when it's complete. If you had fun, don't forget to give this video a big old thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe because all sorts of videos just like this are added all the time. Thanks for joining, guys.